All right, thanks for the introduction. So I'm Min Sum. I'm assistant professor from National Tsinghua University, and Honing Hu is my student. This is a joint work with NVIDIA Research and National Jiao Tong University in Taiwan. So thanks to a rising number of 360-degree cameras, now we can actually capture 360-degree video very easily. At the same time, YouTube and Facebook are streaming those videos to us. That means we can interactively select different viewing angles. Oops, the video doesn't work. Let me show it again. Okay. Let me show it video. So that means we can interact these selective and viewing angles in a normal field of view, just like this. However, actually manually selecting the viewing angles is actually very challenging in a normal field of view. And why is that? Because we totally ignore the valuable information in the panoramic view, as shown in this image. So let me use this video to illustrate how challenging it is. So at the beginning, this guy enjoy exploring different viewing angle. But in a worst case scenario, uh, this might end up to be the situation. So in our CHI paper this year, we actually conduct a human study to compare the viewing experience of watching a sports video with either autopilot assistant, where we automatically move the viewing angle, or without any assistant, where the user need to actually move the viewing angle themselves. And in our study, we found that user prefer autopilot assistant in watching sports videos. Probably with a very similar motivation, Facebook also introduced Facebook Guide that allowed the video provider to label a viewing angle for every two seconds. But we think that we can do better. For example, for a video provider, they might find that labeling every two seconds is very tedious. But for the user, they may need the viewpoint to be labeled more frequently than every two seconds. So that is why we propose Deep360 Pilot. It is a smart 360 degree video assistance. And next, I will give my time to my student Honey to talk about all the details. Go ahead. So thanks. And this is how we do our main task. And we define that at each frame, the agent observes this panoramic image. And we steer the viewing angle here, at the green dot, and we want the normal field of view to cover the next salient objects. And we aggregate all these viewing angles into a viewing angle trajectory, like the green dashed line here. So uh, in, this, in this task, we uh, incorporate two assumptions. The first one is that user will usually focus on the foreground selling objects like this. So uh, this assumption is also true in the uh, like sports videos here. Another assumption is that we want our viewing angle trajectory smooth. So uh, Chen et al. at CBPR 2016, they proposed about trajectory smoothness is a crucial key in viewing experiences. So this red line is more enjoyed. For the, for the viewers. And here is our model. We use an uh, off-shelf detector to extract n object candidates. And we use two RNNs to aggregate the information from past frames to now. And thus, our method is an online algorithm. So we can use it in like online uh, streaming videos. So we use these RNNs to uh, steering the normal field of view to cover the main objects at each frame, and we can aggregate a smooth and accurate trajectories. And here's the feature part. We use the high-level CNN representation as our object appearances, and use the position, uh, I mean, the object center as our position. Also, we use the histogram of flow as our motion features. We then aggregate these each types of features from n objects into each uh, feature blocks like this. And then we aggregate them all into one huge matrix and we denote it as V. We then feed this object feature V and aggregate information into our selector. Then we will output uh, n objects 
saliency set probability ST as they're showing. And we obtain this probability as T by a softmax function over the embedding information. And we can easily obtain the object index I star by Archimax function. Of course, the update information we can fit into next time then for further use. So with the index, we can easily object, uh, get an object position P and also the motion N. Also, we have the information about the previous viewing angle LT minus one. So we can have a pseudo displacements here to if we place our current viewing angle at the position P. But this, why this is a pseudo? Because real displacement will take motion into considerations. So in order to obtain the real viewing angle LT here, we want to use the pseudo displacement and as well as the motion to approximate these displacements here. So here's how we do this. We use uh, our regressor aims to uh, output the displacement, delta t. And under the hood, we use pseudo displacement and concatenate it with motion and feed into our n. And then update this information. And we obtain the displacement by the updated information, embedding with some other information as well. So we can obtain a viewing angle with the motion uh, and the displacement here. And this displacement adding previous viewing angle will be our viewing angle for the current fan here. And ideally, we will feed those features into next time stem for further use. And hopefully, this will obtain uh, many viewing angles here. So we aggregate all these viewing angles, and we can obtain a viewing angle trajectory. And in the ideal case, it will be accurate and smoothed. So above model is trend and test on our 360 sports data set. It consists of five domain of sports, including BMX, parkour, skateboarding, basketball, and dance. Here I would like to use this video from our data set to illustrate how we evaluate our model. So we use main overlap to evaluate how accurate our model is. And by accurate, I mean uh, how much our ground truth field of view overlaps the prediction of a, uh, a field of view at each frame. And here we use intersection of union to calculate this metric. So we want this ratio as high as possible. And on the other hand, we use mean velocity difference to evaluate the smoothness of our trajectories. So you can see here, it's basically this is the curvature of our trajectories. And uh, which means that is how fast you steering your viewing angle here. So of course we want a smooth, so this better will be slow, as lower as possible. And here is our benchmark. So from the table, you can see that our full model is much smoother than ours without regressor, while keeping similar uh, main overlap there. Also, our full model is more accurate than, and also our variants are both more accurate than all the uh, baseline here, including the strong baseline autocam, also the detection plus saliency or motion. And here we also did a human study, and the user study results shows that uh, our full model is significantly outperforms any other methods listed here. And for more details, please see our papers. And here I would like to show you some qualitative results. On the left hand side is 360 videos, and the right, on the right hand side is our prediction view. So as you can see, our prediction uh, successfully focuses on these settings uh, objects. Also, and our model focuses on the, 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 the man doing the slam dunk here. Besides our model, uh, besides our data set, we also test on other data set like panel to V. 
So as you can see, our model focuses on the guy doing the uh, indoor model climbing instead of the crowd over there. Uh, and this is an interesting one. You can see that our model focuses on the first one crossing a creek, and it looks back to the other. So quite interesting, huh? But however, our model is an object-based method. So we do not look at this beautiful background here. And in this situation, they have equally salient objects. So it's hard to evaluate how our model works. And we are not the first one doing 360, 360 video research. And this too might be the most related one. Uh, Sue and Alice Lay from UT Austin proposed a problem called Panel to V. And they proposed an offline method that can uh, steer in the viewing angle every five seconds. For more detail, you can check a look at uh, from their paper or their session at the poster session. And other related work, including like Lai et al. They convert uh, 360 videos into a hyperlapse in normal field of view format, format using semantic high uh, saliency. Also, Kopf did a great job in stabilization in 360 videos. So in the future, we gonna address some problems we currently facing, like uh, in some domains, uh, in some 3 videos, they might have multiple viewing trajectories. So that means uh, with different annotators, they might have some different tastes, so different trajectories. And we want to uh, try to deal with this problem and also uh, figure out how to evaluate our model on this kind of situations. And the other thing is we want to develop non-object-based uh, detectors so that we can f address this problem. So for more uh, details, please visit our project page. And thanks for attention. Ah, I mean, you mean it's the default jittery? Jittery. Jittery. jittering? Jittering. 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 I mean, a little jittering? Yeah. Well, uh, I think this uh, because uh, the first one is my because uh, our model will trying to uh, immediate, uh, in, in mediate uh, between accuracy and uh, smoothness. So I think they might have been some little trade-off between that. And the other thing is uh, the, the, the output of our uh, field of view uh, we generate by our handcraft coding, so might have little problem on there. But I will address this problem as well in the future works. And thanks. Thank you.